everybody. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today is just kind of like a check-in and just a few more future plans that I want to stake out there. So, I'm, I've finished creating Arky version 1. Now I'm on version 2.1. I finished 2.0, um, but now I'm doing 2.1. And essentially what I've added so far is an animation. Um, an animation object which you can attach to an object, a game object. All right, so you can see I changed the object to a game object, so that way it's easier to extend to without accidentally uh, using the the um, objects class that's already inside of the Java um, software. Um, so it extends game object, object, and you can see I can create an animation. All I have to do is set the speed, and then I have to set um, all of the frames, so I can put as many images I, as I want in here, um, and it'll automatically index them, just have to put them in order. And then you tick your animation, and I also added a move method for all objects, and then of course it renders it. So when I run this, you can see it's moving all of the objects, so let me just comment out this move argument, and you can see that it plays the animation at the appropriate speed. And it just it maps them on random positions of the screen, which I told it to do. Uh, because if I go into sample entity map, you can see I created a random object and then set the X and Y positions to a random number between zero and um, the the coordinate on the edge of the screen minus the object's width and or height. Um, that way it stays in the frame, right? So, done that, and I did write in my notebook a few things that I'm going to add. Let me open that up. And this is all for version 2 of Arky. Uh, let's see. So, in my plan of the game, I decided to add a JSON file, lo like management object system, that would allow you to save attributes or objects, right? So, but I never implemented that into Archy 1.0. So, let's see, let's turn to... Okay, so, I created an Archy game idea called Evolution Simulation. Um, and it uses the Arky game engine. This is to preview Arky as the, the game engine. Um, preview it and show how you would make a game with it. Uh, it uses AI, animations, um, and sounds, stuff like that. Anyways, um, so within this, this sample game, or this uh, game uh, demo, which is called Evolution Simulation, uh, there is one type of object, it's called a base organism, and that base organism is going to be a simple square with simple attributes. For example, it moves, it has a specific size, and it's going to move in a random direction, but when it hits another another object, another base organism, it's going to switch directions and do damage. And then once an organism dies, I think the generation, um, the... Uh, once an organism dies, it you know it just gets removed from the from the environment, and then after a specific amount die, it's going to refresh the game with new organisms based off of those previous organisms. But it's going to have different attributes um, that are closer to what the original organisms are. And that kind of sim simulates evolution into how natural selection uh, funnels out all of those uh, mutations in an organism. You know, it's, you know, it's basic. It's basically just an evolution simulator. Um, Alright, so the actual features that I'm going to be adding to Arky in 2.0. So this 2.0 update is going to be called the physics update. Um, first of all, we added animations, which is not really part of physics, but, you know, I added it. And I also um, plan to, I'm also planning to add uh, these new features. Of course, physics, meaning gravity. So gravity means two things in this case. One, gravity can mean 
will mean up and down gravity. So you'll have the choice to implement gravity so that objects can fall up and down. So that would be a side view game, right? But then there's also gravity between two objects. That's the second type of gravity that I'll be implementing. And the user who's creating the game will have the choice to uh, use either gravity system. Next is next in the physics update is the collision system. Uh, that just essentially how that's going to work is let me find it. <laughs> it's okay. So the collision system it's probably going to collide. So when it collides with another object's bounds, it will either invoke it'll either invoke a method called on collision, or it will. Um, set a, a boolean so that you'll be able to access, you'll be able to check whether it collides just like how you check with a key. So so when you check if a key is pressed, you do key key manager dot is dot on press and then you specify the key. And that just, and that method constantly returns a true or false statement, but when you click the key, it'll return true. So when it collides, then it's going to return true for that one tick, uh, but we'll see. It might be both. Uh, and then this one might be a little harder, so that might come like last, or maybe not in this update, and that's friction. I have no idea how to plan that out, so there's nothing else for me to say. Uh, another feature um, is the saving updates. So this is going to be in update 2.2 probably. Um, but essentially the saving update, that's not the permanent name, I'm still brainstorming names, but uh, the new feature is uh, object serialization and or you know saving an object so it'll have a system that you can use to save an object an object and its attributes within a json file during runtime right so it's not to save an object within the within the code because that's that just doesn't make any sense that's redundant um instead it's going to save an object's attributes during runtime so when let, let's say you're playing minecraft right and you you load into a world and you have a chest and you put stuff in it it's got to save all of the contents of that chest so essentially what this is doing is it's this uh, JSON file saving system is just going to be a system that you can use. Um, so saving and loading, a few ways this could work is uh, the object would extend a certain class that determines that it will be saved automatically. Or maybe there's a, a map containing all of the objects and their save and their values that will be saved. Or maybe it'll just be a save and load manager where uh, you just call a method to save it, um, save it within this specific. Sorry, save this value. So let's say you have a you have a variable inside of the player object, and you'll just do save manager, which will be a separate object dot save, and then you pass in a certain variable, and then you'll say save it with this class. It'll do that and store it in a JSON file. Not sure. Haven't gone to that yet. I want to implement. Uh, a sound system first, which is um, the audio loader, which is another feature. So the difference between this audio loader and the audio loaders from my uh, previous projects is that it's going to be, I'm going to attempt to try to have it play an audio, and depending on where that object, where that aud audio source is, so let's say it's attached to a player, to the player, and the player is currently on top right corner of the screen, then it'll play it on the right um, ear cut, ear um, speaker. And so obviously that's going to load, load sound and of course add a movement thing, which I already did. Alright, so that's it in the notebook. Okay, so what have I done so far? Well, this is Arky. This, this is the actual game engine right now. And, oh! Here's another thing. So I plan, let me write this down in my notebook, because I plan to have, sorry, one second. Let's turn the page. So uh, two types of, no, two, oops, two methods of implementing 
arc key. Alright, one second. I'm gonna have to rip this page out because I. Oh, shoot. Ah, oh, whatever. Just rip it out. Let's rewrite it. So. My apologies. Okay, so. I just need to rewrite the. Um, implement. Audio. Loader. This audio loader is going to load sound files, play um, in direction of source, and of course um other features like looping so other features um i e play pause stop loop etc all right so that's the implementing audio loader. I uh, just had to rewrite that. And then, so the two ways of implementing Archie. So, two methods of Archie implementation into game, right? So this is the two methods of Arc implementation into the game. So, number one is the open source. So this, uh, this uses the template posted on github so that's the current version I'm working on now and two is the um, library which is a jar file implement into project project external libraries okay so now that I've written that down let me just let me just recap what I said there so, there are two methods of implementing Archie into your game. Number one is the open source method, which is what I'm doing right now. So the open source method is using GitHub, as you can see. My GitHub repository is called Archie 2.0 Open Source. So how it works is it's a public template, which you can click use this template it'll create a github repository in your own account and then you can pull that project into IntelliJ so you can get the project from VCS and that is going to represent you that's going to present you with this project structure you can see on the left it's going to say com.samplecompany archie.gameengine and game game.sample game and then you'll be able to change the sample company and then change the the game name but then your open source game engine would be in the archie.game engine and then you can use all your resources with the resources folder all that st stuff right so then there will be the external libraries method which essentially what you're going to do is go to file project structure go to libraries or actually yeah modules Go to dependencies, and you are. Wait a minute. 
one moment. Libraries, I believe. Oh, my mistake. You're going to go into project structure and libraries, and then you're going to add a new uh, new project to project library. So you're so what's going to happen is you're going to add a Java a Java file, right, or a jar file. So you're going to you're going to download the Archie jar file and you're going to click the jar file you downloaded and add that to the project. And then you'll be able to use all of its methods, uh, etc. And it'll be a lot more straightforward. It so the first one will be more code based um because all of the game information you'll you'll be um, you will be referencing in code. For example, in this reference file, you're going to be setting the name, the game ID, the version, the target FPS. You're going to set that all in here. But in the external libraries method, implementation method, uh, you're not going to be able to edit the code there. And I don't expect the user to create their own reference class because that would be uh, that that would create a lot of opportunities to for errors. So instead what it's going to do is you are going to have to create a game info file within this library within a libraries uh, module and that game info file you're going to put all the information within the reference file you're just gonna put it inside of the game info file and that's how the the game engine is going to uh, find that information that's it so those are the two methods of implementing the game engine. Now I have yet to make the latter, um, but I will be working on that in some points after I finish all this other stuff. Um, and right now I just want to work on this physics update. And yeah, so let's run it and just see what what it is right now. Uh, let's go to the reference file because it should be 1920 by 10. You know what? No, let's give it a 1080 by 720. All right, so that's about it. Thank you for for watching. Uh, that took 17 minutes. Wow, a lot longer than I thought. Have a good day. Hope to see you soon.